All right, welcome. Uh, in this question, we are taking a question from Minkus Macroeconomics, Chapter 14. Chapter 14 is the chapter on aggregate supply and the trade-off between inflation and unemployment. Uh, in the eighth edition that we're using, uh, this is question five. So in this question, we're going to deal with the sticky price model. Uh, firms choose production based on expected prices or where uh, uh, current prices deviate from uh, expected prices. So if uh, current prices deviate from their expectations, they adjust production. So here's the question. Um, five, this is question five from chapter 14. Assume that people have rational expectations and that the economy is described by the sticky price model. Explain why each of the following propositions is true, and we're just going to do A here. So A says um, only unanticipated changes in the money supply affect real GDP. Changes in the money supply that uh, were anticipated when prices were set do not have any real effects. So let's look at the sticky price model. This says that um, short-term supply, which is Y here, or GDP, or firm's output, uh, is a function of long-run supply, which is Y bar, um, and the deviation between observed prices in the economy and expected prices, what firms expected prices to be. Um, so it might be a little confusing to get the intuition with this the sticky price model equation, because usually we have causation going in the other direction, that is to say, from output to prices. Um, that is, it usually works um, that when output is high, demand is usually high, and so firms will set higher prices. But with this model, um, uh, let's work through this model by comparing an un unanticipated shock with an anticipated shock. So with an anticipated monetary expansion, um, you know, suppose that there's a money shock that was fully anticipated by firms. So if there's a money shock, uh, for a money shock, think that the central bank just prints a lot of money and spreads it around the economy, prices will definitely rise. But because this was an anticipated monetary expansion, uh, firms fully expect, you know, they, they saw it happening. Um, and so they'll, um, they'll set their expected value at EP uh, exactly in line with um, what prices actually are, right? This is a fully anticipated money supply shock. So when prices go up, the, those firms saw that happening. You know, nothing's, nothing's a surprise to them. So they set their prices uh, in anticipation of that extra money being spread around the economy, driving prices up. So when EP, expected prices, equals uh, the price level, this whole term here in the Phillips curve goes to zero because price minus EP, you know, and when those two terms are equal to each other, this all goes to zero. Uh, and short run output is just going to be exactly in line with potential output. That's what we get with an anticipated money expansion. However, with an unanticipated monetary expansion, um, when firms were setting expected prices, they were setting EP, they didn't know that the central bank was going to you know, print a bunch of money. They didn't know that they were going to do the monetary expansion. So when they set EP, they didn't know that prices were going to increase. So in the unanticipated example case, EP does not equal to the price level. And what does that mean given our, uh, our model here for the aggregate supply model? Well, if uh, current prices are not in line with expected prices, then output, short run output, is not going to be in line with um, potential GDP. And further, we could say a little bit more here, um, since uh, expected prices are less than what prices were. Remember, uh, we know that prices are going to go up because it's a short-run monetary expansion. Um, expected prices are definitely going to be less than what prices end up occurring, right? So if this number is less than this number, you have a bigger number minus a smaller number. This whole sign here is definitely going to be a positive number. So short run output in that period is going to be equal to potential output plus some positive number. So we know that short run output is going to be above potential. So this unanticipated monetary expansion is going to bump up growth in the economy. Output's going to increase. Um, a bit more intuitively on the unanticipated monetary expansion. Um, so the way I like to think about it is, you know, suppliers or firms in this case, they have imperfect information, right? It was an unanticipated monetary expansion. They had certain expectations about prices when they set that EP term. Um, and then come the time, come, come the next period, they find that uh, they set prices lower than was actually being demanded by the market. You know, 
uh, they're, they're sitting there in the market and all of a sudden they see that there's a lot more demand floating out there. There's a lot of more money chasing their goods and services. So firms, you know, seemingly rationally, um, increase production to catch up with this, with this uh, higher demand that seems to be suggested by the higher prices. So to me, that's the way that this unanticipated monetary expansion could uh, actually get real, you know, this real term, real GDP to be above that potential rate. Um, also, uh, we could deal with, um, you know, our AD and AS curve analysis. So here, have a look at this. We started off at point A, you know, with aggregate demand, AD1, and aggregate supply, AS1. Uh, in the long run, the aggregate supply uh, is in line with this curve right here. I'm not sure it's actually long run aggregate supply. This is just what potential GDP is in the economy. You know, this is like potential long run GDP. So we start off over here, uh, and then suppose we get this unanticipated monetary expansion. So that's going to be the shift from the AD curve, from AD1 to AD2 to point B. Uh, in the short run, equilibrium moves from point A to point B. Um, the increase in aggregate demand raises the actual prices from P1 here to P2. So, the, however, when um, firms were setting their prices back in this period, at, uh, you know, the initial starting point, they set their expected prices equal to this. And so uh, expected prices are P1, but actual realized prices are P2. So realized prices are above expected prices, implying that we have this boom economy, you know, this, this section over here. So that's the un unexpected expansion in aggregate demand causes this economy to boom in the unanticipated case. Now let's talk about the anticipated case. So in the anticipated case, what happens uh, when you get the monetary expansion? Uh, well, the 80 curve immediately jumps up to this point, right, from 81 to 82, just like uh, in the unanticipated case. However, firms were fully expecting that to happen. So when they set their expected prices, they set expected prices exactly in line with P3. So uh, in the anticipated case, given that monetary expansion, uh, the AS curve then immediately shifts back so that production uh, is always right in line with potential. There's basically no jump from point A to this point over here where there's a boom in the anticipated case. However, in the unanticipated case, you have this stop off at point B with a booming economy and then the jump back. Uh, great, hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks and have a good day. Bye.